The first motorcycle camping trip of the season is the best. Except it never quite goes to plan, not for me at least. And this year was no exception. Actually, this year went particularly... Uh, I was in good spirits though as I set up camp. Until they started noticing problems with my gear. Lots of problems. In the morning I broke camp and set off to explore. That's when this happened. I'm alone, it's remote, and nobody knows where I am. Plus, this bike weighs more than my anxiety. But let's back up. In May of 2023, Alberta was on fire. I threw some things together and lit off for British Columbia. Although it's just a short ride away, in BC the air was clearer, and for the time being, there was no ban on campfires. I headed down Settlers Road, near Radium, and arrived at a free campground near Bathtub Falls. I set up my tent, I put some beverages in the refrigerator, I heated up some supper, I relaxed by the fire. Alright dear viewer, here's a true story. I just spent two hours writing a voiceover script, and just now I accidentally erased it. I can't do that again. I just can't do it. So join me now as I speak into my onboard camera. It is the morning, day two, of my solo motorcycle camping trip. The Shakedown Ride. So that was my first motorcycle camp out of the summer, 2023. Uh, I expected a lot of things to go wrong because for me, they always do on the first trip. That's uh, due to a few circumstances, chief among them, my personality. I don't tend to organize and pre-pack and test gear before I just go out and use it. When I was packing, I was all kinds of nervous and anxious and feeling dread and anxiety. Um, not uncommon for every time I go camping for the very first time. But this time it was worse because of events that unfolded this winter. It's been a long, difficult winter for me. And I have struggled with mental health issues. And I am in counseling, seeing a psychologist, and that's helping. By the way, you know that uh, joke that everybody makes? Oh, you never see a motorcycle parked outside of a psychiatrist's office. Ha ha ha! Unless it's the psychiatrist's motorcycle. That, by the way, is bullshit. Um, even though I can walk to my psychologist, so you will never see my motorcycle parked out front there. Um, motorcyclists, even tough, big, burly dudes that uh, have lots of tattoos and are all kinds of... Uh, hardcore, they can struggle with mental uh, health issues just like anybody else. And uh, it takes a real person of character to uh, acknowledge that and not just flail through life making your psychological problems everybody else's psychological problems, which is kind of what I did this winter. Anyway, the point is, I didn't act like I want to act as a man of 50 years old this winter. And uh, I finally realized that there's something going on that I need to address. So I contacted a psychologist and uh, I'm working with him and it's uh, so far so good. Anyway, I didn't mean for this to be a mental health talk, but, um, but that's kind of what it's turning into. And that's kind of why I needed this motorcycle camping trip so desperately. I just needed to get out, clear my mind, um, and, uh, and get some motorcycle therapy. Hey, this is a good time to remind you all that I have written a book called Motorcycle Therapy, and it's an audiobook as well. You can find it wherever audiobooks are sold, I think. Uh, but your best bet for audiobooks, uh, I think, is audible.com. And if you don't want to spend any money or you don't want to sign up or anything, you can actually listen to my entire audiobook, unabridged, for free right here on my YouTube channel. So right now I'm riding up Albert Creek, I think. And if I'm correct, this road will dead end at some point. And then I can walk, I can walk from British Columbia into Alberta. <laughs> uh, it's right on the border, this road is. 
and if I walk to the end of the road, or the end of the trail, which is only a couple of kilometers, I think there's a lake up there called Lehman Lake, maybe? It's not Lemon, it's Lehman, I think? Or is it Lemon? I don't know. Anyway, the parking lot is in British Columbia, and the lake is in Alberta. I'm gonna go see if I can find it. You know that, ooh, this is slippery, or do we have a flat tire? Nope, just slippery. That felt like a flat tire, but it was just really slippery. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's uh, slippery here. Anyway, um, acknowledging or having mental Ill health issues, or especially acknowledging that you have them, is not a sign of weakness. If I'm riding my motorcycle and I uh, crash, because I'm not a very good rider and I just went through some slippery section and it's possible that I could crash and I break my collarbone, um, I would go to a doctor and I would get patched up and people would think that's cool even, right? Oh yeah, I broke my collarbone crashing my motorcycle. Well, mental health issues, <laughs> they're not cool, right? People, there's a stigma to them, but just like a broken collarbone, you can be injured, and through no fault of your own. It can just happen. It can happen to you, like picking up a common cold, um, for which you would just get some you know, over-the-counter medicine, or it could be more severe, like a broken collarbone, for which you might need uh, counseling and guidance. And also, some people, and, and maybe not some people, but sometimes, um, prescribed medication to treat mental health issues is also appropriate. So there's my plug. Okay, enough talk about mental health issues. Are we cool? We're cool. I just switched my camera off and then I decided to... Uh, I'm going to take a look at this before I just go ripping over it. There is, this is an example of something that I would, if I were here with my friend Brian, I would just ride over it and we probably wouldn't even stop for photos. Yeah, like it's fine. Um, I could paddle my way over, which is probably what I'll do. I know, I know, I know. I'm not a big hardcore off-road guy. I am by myself. I don't want to twist an ankle or break an ankle. Um, I don't know. Like, it's not difficult, but I've got a, I've got a pig of a motorcycle, and, uh, it's not difficult, but also, it's kind of committing. If I do tip over, I will be properly pooched, because that's a bit of a drop there. I think I'm just going to come up high here, and then diagonally go across and we shall see we shall see so I don't have a spot device I don't have any kind of GPS tracking I did not tell anybody where I'm going <laughs> these, are all <laughs> these are all just super Yeah. See, it didn't make it very smooth, did I? <sighs> the problem is now getting back down. That's always the problem going up something. You gotta go down. Foreshadow. <laughs> so, this is... <laughs> I just spent all this time... I just I just spent all this time worrying about that little washout and I set up my cameras and everything and that was just over there. I come up here and snowfield and huge washout. So I'm not going to ride I'm not gonna ride across that. Not any chance. I'll go look at it though. Ah, <sighs> well, 
I'm gonna leave my motorcycle there and just go for a little walk across this snow field. Like I was saying, I don't know how far down the road I am. The parking lot for the uh, lake in Alberta might be just around this corner. Or I might be doing a lot of walking if I try to find it. Anyway, there's uh, that's all snow. And this is a footpath. Ooh, I wish I had crampons. It's beautiful. There you can see. We're all well, I hear the offspring fading in, and that can only mean one thing. It's time for the exciting conclusion to this moto vlog, in which I demonstrate just how little I actually know about what I'm doing. Anyway, if you like this video, you can really help me out by clicking the like button and or leaving a comment. For example, would you like to see another video about this weekend that deals more with the actual camping bit? Let me know. And now, the incident. I feel like just riding, like just riding it instead of scouting it. Like I did last time. Going downhill should be easier. No. <laughs> no. I'm gonna definitely, I'm gonna definitely scout this again. Like, don't follow my channel for how to stuff because I typically don't do things correctly. As long as I don't fall here, I can fall there, not here. So I want to come this way and then zip. If I make that sound when I do it, it should work. So part of me wants to just do it, like feet up, and part of me wants to pad, like paddle, just because. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna paddle. You know what? I'm not Chris Birch. Don't forget to make the sound, Jeremy. Zip! That's, uh, so I made the sound. But I still ended up with that. I'm gonna stop filming with my GoPro. I'm just gonna do some lifting. I don't know if I made that look difficult or easy. Um, what's important for me though, as a 50 year old man with uh, bilateral acetabular impingement or bad hips, is to take your time. Now it's time to see uh, if it starts. If not, uh, it might be a two night camping trip because I haven't seen anybody up this road. So uh, wish me luck. <laughs> 